Hey everybody, welcome back to Barter Hordes. My name is Robert. I'm here to do the first part of my monthly recommendations from independent booksellers from around the country. I did it for the first time last month and I'm still not sure exactly what should the, whether I should do it all as one big hairy long video or if I should break it up. Last month I broke it up into two videos that I posted simultaneously and each one was roughly 20 minutes long which I think is, is pushing it. Um, so this month I'm going to try it a little differently. I'm going to do one video each week and I'm only going to cover five books in each video instead of the ten that I covered last week. Uh, please let me know which you prefer. I can do it in one 40-minute video if anybody would watch it. Uh, it might take me six months to upload it with my Wi-Fi speed here at home, but I can do it in one long, long video with 20 books, split it like I did last month, or do it over the course of the whole month, one video a week. I figured this would also give me a chance to do one more short video each week if I split it up this way. So we'll try it in April, uh, but let me know which you prefer. I know people watch booktube videos in different ways. I tend to, to watch them while I'm eating meals uh, in between work or reading or whatever. And so I tend to favor slightly shorter videos as a viewer. Uh, but that may not be true for other people. So let me know if you have a preference. If you don't care one way or the other, that's fine. I just want to do whatever makes it easiest for people who are interested in these kinds of recommendations. Now again, just like last month, these are books that I have not read yet. They're books that have been recommended from independent booksellers all across America. Uh, some of which I'm very interested in and have already ordered copies. Others I had never heard of and they just kind of piqued my interest. So the first one is Tangerine. Uh, it's a novel by Christine Mangan, a historical novel. And I'll just go through the publisher's blurbs for these. The last person Alice Shipley expected to see since arriving in Tangier with her new husband was Lucy Mason. After the accident at Bennington, the two friends, once inseparable roommates, haven't spoken in over a year. But there Lucy was, trying to make things right and return to their old rhythms. Perhaps Alice should be happy. She's not adjusted to life in Morocco, too afraid to venture out into the bustling Medinas and oppressive heat. Lucy, always fearless and independent, helps Alice emerge from her flat and explore the country. But soon a familiar feeling starts to overtake Alice. She feels controlled and stifled by Lucy at every turn. Then Alice's husband, John, goes missing and Alice starts to question everything around her, her relationship with her enigmatic friend, her decision ever to come to Tangier, and her very own state of mind. Tangerine is a sharp dagger of a book, a debut so tightly wound, so replete with exotic imagery and charm, so full of precise details and extraordinary craftsmanship, it will leave you absolutely breathless. So that is Tangerine by Kristen Mangan. Uh, it came out March 27th from Echo. The next one you've probably seen on a number of, of channels already. Uh, I know Kendra Winchester has talked about it uh, on her channel and she's actually the one that got me interested in reading this one and it's Circe by Madeline Miller. Uh, it's the follow-up to Madeline Miller's The Song of Achilles and it comes out uh, next week. In the house of Helios, god of the sun and mightiest of the titans, a daughter is born. But Circe is a strange child, not powerful like her father, nor viciously alluring like her mother. Turning to the world of mortals for companionship, she discovers that she does possess power, the power of witchcraft, which can transform rivals into monsters and menace the gods themselves. Threatened, Zeus banishes her to a deserted island where she hones her occult craft, tames wild beasts, and crosses paths with many of the most famous figures in all of mythology, including the Minotaur, Daedalus, and his doomed son Icarus, the murderous Medea, and of course, wily Odysseus. But there is danger, too, for a woman who stands alone, and Circe unwittingly draws the wrath of both men and gods, ultimately finding herself pitted against one of the most terrifying and vengeful of the Olympians. To protect what she loves most, 
Circe must summon all her strength and choose, once and for all, whether she belongs with the gods she is born from or the mortals she has come to love. With unforgettably vivid characters, mesmerizing language, mesmerizing language and page-turning suspense, Circe is a triumph of storytelling, an intoxicating epic of family rivalry, palace intrigue, love and loss, as well as a celebration of indomitable female strength in a man's world. So that's Madeline Miller's Circe, which comes out April 10th from Little Brown. And this next one is going to be all over book two. Uh, it's Meg Wallitzer's new novel, The Female Persuasion. Uh, her last novel, The Interestings, was a crowd favorite. I didn't read The Interestings. Somehow that slipped through my uh, radar. But I read one of her earlier books, The Wife, and really thought that was interesting. But this one is called The Female Persuasion. To be admired by someone we admire, we all yearn for this the private, electrifying pleasure of being singled out by someone of esteem. But sometimes it can also mean entry to a new kind of life, a bigger world. Greer Kadetsky is a shy college freshman when she meets the woman she hopes will change her life. Faith Frank, dazzlingly persuasive and elegant at 63, has been a central pillar of the women's movement for decades, a figure who inspires others to influence the world. Upon hearing Faith speak for the first time, Greer, madly in love with her boyfriend Corey, but still full of longing for an ambition that she can't quite place, feels her inner world light up. And then, astonishingly, Faith invites Greer to make something out of that sense of purpose, leading Greer down the most exciting path of her life as it winds toward and away from her meant-to-be love story with Corey and the future she'd always imagined. Charming and wise, knowing and witty, Meg Wolitzer delivers a novel about power and influence, ego and loyalty, womanhood and ambition. At its heart, the female persuasion is about the flame we all believe is flickering inside of us, waiting to be seen and fanned by the right person at the right time. It's a story about the people who guide and the people who follow and how those roles evolve over time and the desire within all of us to be pulled into the light. So that's The Female Persuasion by Meg Wolitzer, which came out yesterday from Riverhead Books. So that one's one you can pick up right now. The next one is a memoir. Uh, it's called And Now We Have Everything on Motherhood Before I Was Ready by Megan O'Connell. Megan O'Connell always felt totally alienated by the cutesy, sanctimonious, sentimental tone of most writing about motherhood. After getting accidentally pregnant in her 20s, she realized that the book she needed, a brutally honest, agenda-less take on the emotional and existential impact of motherhood, didn't exist. So she decided to write it herself. And Now We Have Everything is O'Connell's brave exploration of transitioning into motherhood as a fledgling young adult. With her dark humor and hair trigger BS detector, O'Connell addresses the pervasive imposter syndrome that comes with unplanned pregnancy, the second adolescence of a changing postpartum body, the problem of sex post baby, the weird push to make mom friends, and the fascinating strangeness of stepping into a new, not yet comfortable identity. Most unforgettably, O'Connell brings us into the delivery room as no writer has before, rendering childbirth in all its feverish gore and glory and shattering the fantasies of a magical or natural experience that warp our expectations and erode maternal self-esteem. Channeling fears and anxieties that are, shockingly, still taboo and often unspoken, and now we have everything, is an unflinchingly frank, funny, and intimate motherhood story for our times, about needing to have a baby in order to stop being one yourself. And that is, uh, and now we have everything, on Motherhood Before I Was Ready, by Megan O'Connell, and that comes out next week, April 10th, uh, from Little Brown. And the fifth one this week is uh, from Charles Sewell. It's called The Oracle Year. 
Knowledge is power. So when an unassuming Manhattan bassist named Will Dando awakens from a dream one morning with 108 predictions about the future in his head, he rapidly finds himself the most powerful man in the world. Protecting his anonymity by calling himself the Oracle, he sets up a heavily guarded website with the help of his friend Hamza to announce selectively his revelations. In no time, global corporations are offering him millions for exclusive access, eager to profit from his prophecies. He's also making a lot of high-powered enemies, from the President of the United States and a nationally prominent televangelist, to a warlord with a nuclear missile and an assassin grandmother. Legions of cyber spies are unleashed to hack the site, as it's come to be called and the best manhunters money can buy are deployed not only to unmask the Oracle, but to take him out of the game entirely. With only a handful of people he can trust, including a beautiful journalist, it's all Will can do to survive, elude exposure, and protect those he loves long enough to use his knowledge to save the world. Delivering fast-paced adventure on a global scale, as well as sharp-witted satire on our concepts of power and faith, Marvel writer Charles Sewell's audacious debut novel takes readers on a rollicking ride where it's impossible to predict what will happen next. Uh, and that one, The Oracle Year, came out yesterday from Harper Perennial, The Oracle Year by uh, Charles Sewell. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, fast and quick for the first installment for April's recommendations and I'll do the second installment next Wednesday and assuming this is the format I adopt I'll, I'll do that four Wednesdays each month five books each time uh, please let me know in the comments if you've read any of these if you're planning to read any of these any comments that you have about the five choices and also about your preferred type of format for this kind of video if you'd like me to do them all in one big long video or if you like them broken up like this please let me know that as well and I'll be back later this week with a third video which is rare for me but I have a tag that I've been thinking about uh, I was tagged uh, by Sean the book maniac to do this and I'm gonna probably try to post that one on Friday so until Friday I'll see you then bye